Colin had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD. They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free. Now they're cellulose free. Hello and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin and with me as always is my fellow film watcher, compadre and son, Thomas. Hi, hello. What have you been up to? Well, I've been stabbed a fourth time, but for different reasons. Good. So that happened. Good. I have discovered that my body either likes or hates sleep. Okay. One or the other. So at the moment, know. what's it doing? Is it liking it? At the moment, it seems to be liking sleep more so than not. You give your body eight hours, <laughs> and then it doesn't use all of those eight hours to sleep. Right. It maybe uses six or as few as four actually sleeping. And then, like, the moment you actually get a, a good... A good... Eight hours in, like you, you actually give it eight hours, and it uses like the back half of that, and then wants more. <laughs> uh, but what time are you actually? I'm, I'm guessing that you've been watching the tour. I have been, but that didn't happen last night. No, the the night before it didn't. Oh, happen. it didn't happen the night before. It's Wednesday. I've lost a. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you watch it last night. Yeah. And that's that's not really the problem. It's all the stuff afterwards. Right. Just I keep I keep finding things to do. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, the big red off button isn't uh, readily accessible. Mm. Yeah. But still, if I've. <laughs> It's just, it's just very annoying. It's, it's very annoying. Mm. I'm, I'm annoyed. Um, the world needs more yeah. noids. Mm. Um, strange, uh, 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 things. Part two. Yes. Don't, uh, don't give out. anything. Uh, I, I was halfway through the second uh, episode of part two, and then got a phone call and got distracted and then it was late and so I haven't watched it right through to the end so it's it's long yes it's long I enjoyed it but it's long uh-huh. and there will be more of it eventually there will um and yeah the Tour de France started on Friday it started on Friday because there were three days in Denmark and then Monday was a transfer day which is like a rest day but more hectic Mm-hmm. And now we've just had stage four last night, and I am not currently, but will be missing the start of stage five, uh, which is the one with the cobbles in it. Ah, mm. good. So that'll be a fun watch when I get out of this podcast. <laughs> um, we, we we fondly call the Tour de France uh, in this household uh, Men in Lycra. Mm. Uh, t- Tonight it will be men in lycra damaging their accoutrements. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it. We said we were going to start early. Yes. And then we didn't. We didn't, which um, is going to be a problem. I have been uh, watching the time t- tick by and, and get I, distracted myself. <laughs> and yes. I, I think we may even be starting mildly later. I know. Than average. Uh, yes, very much so. In fact, so. we usually start forty-five minutes ago. Mm. What have you haven't. been up to? What have I been up to? Just walking, getting stabbed, mm-hmm. having my vital essence drained. I reached a milestone again, as far as my weight is concerned, which makes me happy. Except for the fact that I got a Facebook memory from four years ago that uh, I proudly announced that I reached a milestone that is 10 kilograms less than what I mm-hmm. the milestone that I reached today so I felt really bad after that anyway 
We've got a movie to watch. We do. And it's a long movie. It is. You have not seen it. I have a number of times. So there have been moments in the afternoon where I've been thinking, oh, do I just choose another one? (laughs) But no, we're going to watch this. What are we watching today? We are watching The Great Escape. Thomas has just picked up the disc and realised that it is a hefty disc box. Mm. It does have two discs in it, but not because it's spread over two discs. No. It's got lots and lots of extras, which we are not going to be watching today. (laughs) We're going to be watching the film, The Great Escape. Please, would you tell our dear listeners what the plot synopsis is on the back of the case? In 1943, the Germans opened Stalag Luftnorf, a maximum security prisoner of war camp designed to hold even the craftiest escape artists. In doing so, however, the Nazis unwittingly assembled the finest escape team in military history, who worked on what became the largest prison breakout ever attempted. Good. Prison breakouts. Mm. Yes. And Germans. And Americans and Englishmen. Mm. An experience that you're about to experience. I am. Thomas is going to open the case. And I believe I'm going to find the. And he's going to find the, the Stargate. Yeah, that's Stargate. <laughs> that's not <laughs> the film. In the, case. the disc is already in the player. We're going to watch this two hours and 43. Yes, except that you've put the wrong disc in. Oh, have I? You have. Thomas is going to take the correct disc out of its case, stick it in the machine after removing the wrong disc, and then we're going to watch it. And we shall then uh, talk about it when we catch you on the flip side. Turn to side B. Or disc A. Yeah, the one that says feature film on it. Yes. Okay. Mongrel. So, what did you think? Um, I, I, think, I think I enjoyed that. I don't know that I particularly felt the length of it. I, I think there are places where an editor these days would make more judicious yes. uh, cuts. Yep, yep. There, there were a number of places where I thought, uh, especially transitions, people walking from one place to another. The mind sensibility these days is that we can join the dots between mm. uh, heading towards something and then coming through a door, whereas there were quite a bit where that traverse was displayed. Um, but, yeah, it's funny that far shorter films we have watched where the need to take a toilet break <laughs> immediately <laughs> after watching um, has, has been that urgency. But even though that's two and three-quarter hours long it is only now once we've started recording yeah. well <laughs> that, of course that i feel that need jack's on you for not going <laughs> it, it is a long film but i think they were honoring the ingenuity mm-hmm. and the bravery and the but they were covering a lot of things and i think they covered it well there were a lot of characters and mm-hmm. my brain couldn't put a name to any of them now, if you were to ask me, uh, okay, who was such and such playing, I could not name them, but you still could keep track of what everyone's responsibility was. Mm. And uh, and they were fleshed out enough to know that they were an important part of the team and they had failings and strengths. and They were characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it was quite quite bizarre knowing that Richard Attenborough... Mm-hmm. was in it. If you were to ask anyone in, in recent years, okay, uh, who's Richard Attenborough? Yeah, he, he was... John Hammond. Yes, Jurassic Park. But I spent some time trying to place him and, boy, he's, he changed over the years. Two and a three-quarter hours and I didn't write a single note either. No. Uh, no. And you? No, the only note I had was for an anecdote I wanted to bring up Uh if it became relevant. Yep. The futility of escape in difficult circumstances such as far away from any particular civilization. Yep. You don't get far and then you're brought back and then you're 
right where you were. Yeah. But for that small chance. That you small go chance, anyway. but they also did emphasise the fact that that's not necessarily why their responsibility is to mm. attempt to escape. It is to be an absolute nuisance. Mm. And it also gave the opportunity to show that such things can only be taken so much before gentlemanly agreements are, are thrown out the window and atrocities occur. Mm. The anecdote. So... Anecdote comes in sort of two parts. First of all, the most most related part of the anecdote, James Earl Ray assassinated Martin Luther King Jr. and was kept in uh, Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, which is surrounded by some amount of woods and bad terrain. Mm-hmm. Uh, the story goes that James Earl Ray escaped, and over the next... Three days covered about 12 miles Yeesh. in the cold before he was captured again and returned to the penitentiary. Mm-hmm. Part two. Gary Cantrell. Uh, part two, part A. Ultramarathons. <laughs> ultramarathons are like marathons, but longer and usually taking place over multiple days. And you don't get a lot of rest, because nobody else is getting a lot of rest, and if you want to win, then you can't take a lot of rest either. Yeah. Gary Cantrell, nicknamed Lazarus Lake, heard this story of James Earl Ray, and was like, I could, I could do at least a hundred miles in this terrain. It, I'd be fine. Uh, and so the Barclay Marathons were born. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, a quote-unquote 20-mile loop through terrain near this penitentiary, which you have to do five laps of. You have 12 hours to complete each loop. If you fail, taps will be played to you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Very secretive entry methods. First entry, you have to bring a, a number plate from your place of residence, wherever that happens to be, like 40 participants okay. get to do it every year. Right. Um, and uh, if you are accepted, you receive a letter of, of condolence. <laughs> um, and then you do a loop one way, a loop back the other way, a loop one way, loop back the other way, and then forget any attachments you may have made to any of the other participants, because to add an extra twist of the knife to the whole experience, the fifth lap, Cantrell sends one runner off in one direction, and the next in the other direction, alternating, so any... Ah, you don't have... (laughs) right. Uh, the, The way that the course is marked, there are books dotted around the course, and each time you take a lap, you are given a race number... And that race number is the page number that you need to tear out of each of the books. Ah. Number one is reserved for the runner who is uh, considered least likely to complete one lap. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. Yeah, and they keep doing that day and night for up to 60 hours. Good grief. Wow. Wow. And how long has this been happening? Uh, let's see here. It was first run in 1986. Okay. And, and it's happened yearly ever since? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the the only cancellation was in 2020 for... Reasons. The the reasons that everything was cancelled in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> uh. and, and there are a variety of other ultra marathons with more or less strenuous requirements. Um, Cantrell also runs a ultramarathon that is doing loops of his backyard. <laughs> and you have an hour, you have an hour to complete the loop. And if you make it back, you have a little bit of time to rest before you have to get back on the starting line and do another loop of the backyard. <laughs> and keep doing How, loops how big back- is this backyard? It, it it's a little more than the backyard, to be honest. Right, but, okay. 
Some of it takes place over a road, but... <laughs> but you do a loop, and you keep doing loops until everyone's given up. <laughs> Good. And I believe there's a small requirement that has to be met for anyone to have actually been considered to have won. Right. Yeah. <laughs> One gets the feeling that that you got distracted somewhat at some place during that movie. No, no, I had this anecdote completely pre-prepared. Oh, right. <laughs> We do live in a place that was basically populated by convicts and there are penitentiaries that uh, the escape from which was fraught with all sorts of dangers, real and imagined. So, uh, <laughs> Australia, love living here. Terrible place to make a home for a country. Yes, yes. <laughs> We just hang on by the yeah. the skin of our teeth as we get gnawed to death by death adders and mm. poisonous spiders. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I laugh about the perception that we live in a country that is out to kill you. But uh, my my brief sojourn into the the U.S. <laughs> and uh, anecdotal stories of bears, you know, it just. At least in Tasmania, uh, there's nothing big that is going to kill you. Mm. There are no crocodiles. There are no... Well, you, you could get attacked by a shark. Yeah. And, and that, that has certainly happened, but the water temperature down here is, is such that we have more shark sightings than any real threat. And then sharks. everyone gets out of the water That's for right. a bit. That's right. Um, you know, the, the little crawly things that might kill you, but uh, so there is in, in the US, you know, a rattlesnake. Will, we certainly have very poisonous snakes here, mm-hmm. but their method of administering venom to their victim is a very, very poor evolutionary design that doesn't so much inject as the fangs make a hole and then the venom trickles down a groove in the outside of the fang. So it it doesn't inject venom at all. It just hopes that the hole and the venom eventually meet up. (laughs) And, yeah, so, so yes, very, very venomous, but the chances of you dying from a snake bite, in Tasmania at least, is if you follow correct procedures, you're usually pretty safe, especially if you get medical intervention like, like wearing trousers <laughs> wearing wearing trousers good way to avoid a lot of things yes, yes. um <laughs> we've digressed we have yeah i do still i keep on going on about the length of that film but i've watched it many many times and i can see myself watching it again in the future because of the fact that it just keeps Giving. Yeah. Albeit slowly. I enjoyed it. Uh, It's slow, but a lot happens in that slowness. Yep. And it's got the right amount of humour to to break up what is ultimately a terrible, terrible story. (laughs) uh, uh, Based on true events and... 76 escaped, three got away, and 50 were murdered. Yep. Spoilers. Um, yeah. All right. Do you have anything else you have to say about... <laughs> which, which is where I was going with the futility of escape thing, oh, yeah. to be clear. So I think from here on in, we'll just keep on watching Prison of War escape movies. Well, we'll get to that, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't think there's too many on the shelf other than that one. Anyway, anything else? No. I can just heartily recommend this film if you haven't seen it. Except it doesn't seem to be streaming, at least on any of the straight-out streaming services. You know, MGM, bought out by Amazon, might make its way onto Prime yeah, at some point. Yeah, it might. Yep. All right. That, we- that sounds like money waiting to happen. <laughs> it does. Anyway, let's move on. The following segment is currently on fire. Have a nice day. 
There was a comment on your post, but I'm not sure it's from someone who even listens to the podcast, so... Yes, I, I'm, I'm not aware of either of these people listening to our podcast, and I, I'm certainly not picking on them for, for not doing so, but uh, uh, yes. Tyson says, understandably, it isn't everyone's favourite flavour, but I like hot fuzz a lot. Which does sound like Tyson. It does sound like Tyson, and it does sound like a Tyson film. Mm. Yes. And Liz says, pub? Yep, that's basically all we have for this segment. I don't think there was anything anywhere else. (laughs) And if you haven't seen the film, uh, the relevance of that statement by Liz is probably lost on you. But that's all right. I understood it. All right. Well, we shall move on then. Pick a film for next week so we can go to bed. And it's your turn. It is my turn. Oh, and I wonder where you're going to go uh, with this. Who could possibly guess where trends are I think we're going mint-flavoured, aren't we? We are going mint-flavoured here. Excellent. So, so we've done strawberry. Yes. We've done classico. We have. Uh, and now we have mint. Mint in the Cornetto trilogy. Mm. And mint in the Cornetto trilogy refers to the world's end. Which is... Thus far, the last and most mm. recent of the trilogy. <laughs> they, they, they might make more. They, they are fairly uh, spaced apart, they the, are. the releases of yes. these films. 2004, 2007, 2013, 12 more years, 2025. We'll have to look up the uh, English flavours of Cornettos to see what's mm. out there. Uh, sorry, I can't remember the name of it again. You've... The World's End. The World's End. It's another relationship comedy. Set in the dying days of the Earth, is what I suspect. <laughs> so Potentially. So, so they're all relationship comedies and they're all genre comedies. And the genre of this one is science fiction. Okay. Yeah. So the name may not necessarily mean the end of the world as we know it. It might not. It might not. You know. You've I seen know. it. I've seen it. I have not. Please tell our dear listener what World's End is all about. For Gary King and Andy Knightley, it was supposed to be the ultimate reunion. One night, five friends, twelve bars. A boozy quest to the World's End pub on which only the strongest will survive. Having the time of their lives, they're ready to take on the world, but tonight, they might just have to save it. From Edgar Wright, director of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, I don't don't know why this is on the back of this particular case, but... (laughs) Because you should know, but... (laughs) Comes a wildly entertaining thrill ride of outrageous humour and explosive action that will raise a glass to the apocalypse. Pub? Twelve of them. (laughs) (laughs) That is what we're in for next week. We hope that you can join us as we do a pub crawl, which could be interesting, seeing as neither of us drink. Um, Mm. (laughs) But we hope that you can join us for a glass. But until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. You have been listening to Cellulose Free. Your hosts were Colin, who produces and edits the show, and Thomas, who makes the artwork and music. Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a Hi Hello production. Why did I go there? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Why does anyone do anything? I don't know. Didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <sighs> Nobody expects a Spanish Inquisition. Well, this is going to be a short podcast. <laughs> Long film, short yeah. podcast.